Okay, so hello and welcome back to another Unity Multiplayer tutorial. Today we're going to be having a look at how to upgrade your Unity Multiplayer project to Netcode for Game Objects v1.0, which is the first stable release. Hope you're looking forward to it, so let's get started. So now that Unity have released the first stable version of their Netcode for Game Objects, there's a lot of people who will want to migrate their old projects to the new stable version, but there are a lot of breaking changes. On the documentation there is a short guide on how to upgrade, but it doesn't quite cover everything because after following through with this I still had quite a few errors and things that needed updating, so I'll be going through the projects that I've used for tutorials and showing you what needs to be upgraded to make it work with the new version. So whilst I will be going through all the different things that need changing, I won't be going line by line and fixing everything here in the tutorial, so if you go over to the GitHub and go to the latest commit, you'll actually see here, this commit contains everything I changed to make it work with the latest version. So go here if you want to look at that. So the first step should be backing up your project before you do the big upgrade. So make sure you push that to GitHub or whatever you want to do. And then open up Unity. And the first thing you need to do is uninstall the current ML API package and then install the new Unity netcode package. So we'll go up to window, package manager, and then find it in your list of packages and uninstall it. And then once you've done that, hit the add package by name and you want com.unity.netcode.gameobjects. Once you've typed that out, hit add and then you should see it inside of your list of packages. You'll also notice in the console there'll be a list of errors and we'll go through what could be causing those right now. So let's head over to one of our projects, go into the scripts and open up any of the scripts. So the first thing to change and probably one of the easiest is to update the namespace from using MLAPI to using unity.netcode. And you can use in, for example, VS Code, the search and replace to search for using MLAPI and then replace it with using unity.netcode and so on. Uh, this will work for pretty much everything, but you'll notice if I go over to the GitHub Whilst we are changing from MLAPI to netcode, there is also MLAPI.messaging, transports, and all this other stuff. But that's all been compact now into unity.netcode. So some of these you can just entirely remove so that most of your scripts with networking, if not all of them, will just be using unity.netcode and that's it. The next thing to look at are network variables because previously you could do network variable of type and then let's say integer which you can still do but there also used to be some inbuilt types previously so you could have network variable string as a type but they've removed all of those in favor of just passing it in as the generic type so you'd have it like this now for strings specifically because of how their data is managed if we go and look over here uh, that's for the players team index here we go if we go look at the overhead display for the names Instead of using string now, it's fixed string 32 bytes. And then wherever you use string in here, so if I go down and look at the method for when it updates, just change string to fixed string 32 bytes. And whenever you need to use it as a string, you just call dot to string. And like I said, where we used to use, uh, if we go over to here, we used to use network variable byte. You now have to change it to network variable of type byte. And then when I passed in zero, you need to make sure it actually passes in a byte. If you just pass in zero, it will treat it as an integer, I imagine. Um, yeah, so need to make sure I use a byte. You could also just pass in a value here and cast it to a byte. Then for your own custom types, so if we go over to I network serializable, for example, over here in the lobby player state, you now have to, for, yeah, if you're using strings, you have to use fixed string 32 bytes again. And this method over here for network serialize has changed. It used to be a slightly different syntax, but it looks like this now in case you're curious. And then instead of just serialize, I think it was, it's now serialize value. And one other thing you have to use is you have to fill in your own equals method for determining if the state has changed. So you have to add the interface I equatable of type and then the type that your struct is. And then down here, you have to write the logic for checking if it's equal to another instance of the state. So just saying, if the IDs are the same and the names are the same and is ready is the same, then it is the same. But if any of these are not the same, 
then it has changed. And that's just how it uses the logic for detecting if it's changed. And if it has changed, then syncing it over the network. If we go over to a network behavior on network spawn, you'll see here, instead of overriding network start, we're now overriding on network spawn. That's the name they have opted for now. So you just need to do a find and replace for those as well. And if you're inside of a network behavior and you use the on destroy method, it'll give you a warning here telling you it's now needing to be overridden. So public override void on destroy call the base method, which handles cleaning up network variables and other such thing under the hood. Just make sure that gets called. Otherwise you might get some memory leaks. So I'm sure someplace in your code, you're using the scene manager to send all of the clients to a certain scene. Now that's network manager dot singleton dot scene manager. It's inside of there rather than being its own static class. And if I look inside of here, that also goes for the prefab handler and the spawn manager. And I've used those kind of things before. So keep in mind now, if you want to access these, they're inside of the network manager. And for knowing when clients changed scene, I used to use a custom event type and set all that up separately. But now you can just subscribe to the scene managers on scene event and make your own method to say what should happen when a client changes the scene. And so you can see here the client that changed the scene and which scene they changed to. And speaking of custom events or custom messages, we'll go over here and go custom message and we'll go find where this is. So where we had these client messages, the custom ones, the syntax has slightly changed. So comparing that to what we used to have, you can see it over here on the GitHub, for example, but they have changed that around. It's honestly not too different in terms of how it works. You still just register a message with a custom name. You have your parameters here that get passed in. And then over here, you write your logic. So we want to just read the message as a connect status, which is just an enum. And then we raise our own event. So we uh, trigger our own event here. And then we pass in the status. And that's so we can use that to know how the player got disconnected, for example. And we can pop up a screen saying they got disconnected because the password was wrong or because there's too many players or whatever reason it may be. And now when it comes to starting or stopping the server, for example, we used to have to think about stop client, stop host, stop server, but they've just made that into one method now for shutdown. And I have noticed here that when I leave, I shut down the server and then I check if we're hosting to do this unsubscribing. But by this point, we won't be a host because we've shut down the server. So that's technically not correct. But the idea is wherever you would stop client, host or server, you just replace that with shutdown and it's all handled for you. And then finally, for starting as a host, for example, if we go over to here where we start host, we used to pass in, if we look at GitHub, we used to pass in our position and rotation that we'd want to spawn the player object in with, but we can't do that anymore. We can't pass anything in here. We just start as a host. So to actually do this now, the approval check that is called on the server side is also called for the host. So you can just set it up there. So if we go to down here to approval check. I've just added in an extra case here. It used to just be case one player, case two player, but now it's if there are zero players. So if you're the first one to join, then give you these positions and rotations and all works just fine. And just to prove that works, if we go back and hit play, assuming I'm in the right scene, we can join, enter a password, hit host, and the player spawns in at the right spot and they can still do all the stuff here and they can leave and there are no issues in the console. Now that I've gone through everything I had in mind with the code, just have a look over at your network managers and you'll notice now it used to be a prefab list and then you could tick if it was the player prefab, but now the player prefab has its own field and network prefabs are separate. So I had to remove my player prefab from this list and then add it in as the player prefab. So yeah, that should be everything. If you've noticed something that I've missed, then be sure to let me know in the comments and I'll try and help you out there, or I'll just update it on the GitHub and make sure that stays up to date for you if you wanna go check the latest version of Netcode for Game Objects. If you enjoyed the video or found it useful, then please leave a like and subscribe. Be sure to let us know down below what you want to see next. Thanks as always for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye. But of course, before I go, I've got to thank my patrons. A special thanks to Alan W, Francisco Lira, Sahila, John Jannigan Mills, Benjamin Hilda, David McDermott, Evan Maxey, George Pierce, Katinka Mom, Lawrence Simpson, 
Malvin, Mark McCoggle, Mike Miller, Rack, Andrew Williams, Fury, and Dario. If anyone else is able to help support the channel monetarily, the link to Patreon is down below. If not, there are also links down below to other social media, such as Twitch, Twitter, and Discord. If you could help us out by following on any of those or checking any of those out, that'd be greatly appreciated. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.